day. Today we're going to be doing a quick hit video on how to bring in IPT files into the Fusion operating environment. Once the IPT files are in, it converts it to a uh, standard F3D style file and you're able to use them. So with this particular project that uh, we have in our class, we have three particular files, the base, the wedge, and the wedge screw. Now I've downloaded those already and put them into a folder and I can look at the icons here if I choose it choose the view large icons I can then see the images of the the IPT items so the big question is well then how do we get them from my the download into our operating system so there's a couple of ways for us to accomplish that to bring these particular files in now one of the ways is I could actually drag and drop it onto the screen that's one way the other way which is a little bit more structured allows us to go under file open and when we open our files there's one of the options that says open from my computer so I select open from my computer and under the demo window I've got the three files so if I choose the base and I probably could hold the control key down and select multiple ones. Nope, it only, only allows me to bring in one at a time. So I'll pick the base and choose open. So it's going to go ahead and process it and bring it in. So it's, in, it's ultimately converting the IPT into a Fusion file. And I need to do this for each of the three files to bring it in. And it will take a couple of minutes depending upon your computer on how fast that happens and we'll go again back up to open my computer and this time we'll do the wedge so again it brings it in and I can do the third one file open my computer and the wedge screw and so it's going to take a couple of minutes for each of these to be brought in and when it is it says that it's complete Well, that took a couple of minutes to uh, be brought in properly, but now all the files are actually in the F3D. So now it's a situation of doing file open, and I should have the files, the wedge, the base, the wedge screw in my list. So I've already imported them multiple times, as you can see. So I can now select the wedge the wedge base so if I choose open it brings in the wedge and if I choose file and open I can bring in the wedge screw and if I choose file and open now it's bringing them into different files oh no but I want them all into one assembly so what we're going to end up having to do is is bring these and merge them into an assembly uh, operation and so again not a difficult environment we just need to, to bring one file into another so there really is an easy way to copy things from or bring things from one drawing environment to the other because this wedge screw came in as a separate object you know you're stressing out oh no I can't you know it's not part of the same assembly but it's actually quite easy I'm just going to go ahead and select it a window around it so the object is selected I'll right mouse click on it and I'll choose copy so just like the Windows tool I'm going to go ahead and copy this object I'm going to click over back to the wedge so now we're back in the original wedge and I'll right mouse click and I'll paste it so I actually paste the object now it's going to come in as a body I can bring it in as a component because you want the component level brought in if it's brought in as a body you have to change it to a component for assembly purposes so it's best just to bring it in as a component straight up or in this case it may only allow us to bring it in as a body and work from there and so we're able to bring this in Let's see 
see if it works as a component. No, nope, but it only allows us to bring it in as a body, which is okay. We're able to bring it in as a body, choose okay. Once it's brought in as a body, we'll then be able to convert this because we've got one body here, one body here. We can then go ahead and create a component from that body so it can be assembled. And that's the, the process. So now we've created a new component, give it, a new, give it the name of the wedge screw. And again, don't leave it as just component 1-1. Make sure that you rename this particular tool. And again, to rename it, you got to double click very slowly on it and you'll then be able to rename it. And so now that component can then be assembled using the assembly tools into our wedge. And that's the way it works. That is your quick hit opportunity to accomplish um, the process. That's the best part about this whole thing, is that we're able to control everything that we need to do. Have a great day.